Hello everyone, and today I thought I would make a video explaining dandelion lessons. And yeah, mostly because it, en it encompasses so many things that I do. And it's this overarching philosophy that I have about um, spending time um, creating art. So I, I thought I would start this is a little notebook that I keep um, and I write some thoughts about dandelion lessons in every now and then when they come to me. And I wanted to read you <clears throat> a little bit of it. So I started with my four guiding lights for dandelion lessons. And, and in a nutshell, dandelion lessons are my way of sharing what I hold dear about my creative practice with other people in hopes that they will be inspired to start their own and that they will have the desire to incorporate different artistic practices in their everyday life for no other purpose than to create joy for themselves and to send joy to someone else. Okay? So the four guiding lights, and you probably can't read this because I wrote it in like a gold ink, but the first one is that we honor and appreciate the moment in time that we spend in, in the creative practice and that we honor our tools, our paper, our brush, and our paints. And for me, this means keeping very simple tools. So um, I have papers that I use and they're beautiful papers. They're very special and I only use them for these special um, practices. Um, my paints, I, I know you've heard me talk about them a million times, but the paints that I reach for when I'm doing my dandelion lesson practices are my wild thorn paints. And I have, I have grown quite a collection over time, um, and they are very precious to me, and I treat them um, with honor and respect and appreciation. And then I have two brushes that I reach for, and one of them is a badger hair brush that I've had for a few years. And I can leave links below if you're interested in these, but this, I love this brush because it's beautiful and it's stiff and it, it is, um, there's no control with it. <laughs> and I just really like the way it feels in my hand when I'm painting and I like the marks that it allows me to make. And then I have my little um, squirrel mop and any pointed round would do. But these two brushes are the brushes I reach for now when I do my creative practices. And then, so that's my paper, my brush, and my paints, and that's all I need, okay? And then <clears throat> the second one is that you make a wish for two-fold joy. The joy that I receive when I'm in the act of, of my creative practice and the joy that I can offer someone else when I send it to them or give it to them. And then one of the other ones is persistence through all difficulties. Our art practice can see us through some difficult times. It has for me, that's for sure, um, and it can for you too. It is something very simple and sacred, and um, this is not the art practice of the art business. It's very different. This is a very personal practice. It is not the art practice of creating a painting to sell or hanging in a gallery or, you know, it, it's not about that. This is about a very personal practice. So our art can see us through if we, if we show up every day for it, for our creative practices. So that is a big part of dandelion lessons. And then the fourth guiding light is that we scatter our joy far and wide. So these things that we do, some of them are, are for, for us. Um, I'll show you my meditation journal. And that, um, you know, I, I have some just for me and I, I have some that I can send out into the world. And um, also, it is about planting the seed in other people to begin their own practices. So once you take these practices in as your own, you know, that you incorporate into your daily life, 
what, what, my hope is that you'll share them with others, you know, that you'll teach someone else. And that is a big part of it too. Dandelion lessons, I mean, while it might be something that I created and began to share, I don't believe that it belongs to me. So I want everybody to adapt it as their own and to scatter it far and wide. Okay, so those are my four guiding lights. So I'm going to read this to you that I wrote. Um, Dandelion lessons came to me on a wing of inspiration from many, many places. You know, I mean, um, my whole experience that, that I've had in my life, um, all many, many things came together and inspired me. So it came to me on a wing of inspiration. It is the fruition of many different philosophies and art forms, many different ideas that I have found inspirational for my own practice. Dandelion Lessons does not belong to me. It belongs to everyone. It belongs to the collective spirit of art making. I'm only a, a messenger of sorts, you know, I mean, I, and each of you can be a messenger of sorts. All right, it is meant to be shared, and it's my desire that people just run with it. Okay? That is what dandelions do. They are nourished from the earth and sun and rain. They persist despite the obstacles and drought, and they bloom in joy, that beautiful sunshiny yellow. Then with the help of the wind, inspiration, right? That's, that's I mean, inspiration, the word itself means breath. Then with the wind, they scatter their seeds and spread their joy far and wide. And so there's some other things in here, but <clears throat> the meaning of life is to see. Being an artist does not mean covering clean pieces of, pieces of paper or canvas with ink or pigment. It does not mean solo exhibitions or prizes. It definitely does not mean labeling ourselves as artists. Being an artist um, is a strange thing to say. I think instead, I like to say, I'm a mark maker. I, I have a creative practice and I sit down every day and I draw or paint what I see in the world and what I experience. And it's not really about creativity. And it's, it's not about anything but documenting what I see. And sometimes it's very realistic and sometimes it's very dreamy. It just depends, you know. So it can be so many things. So Dandelion Lessons covers many different practices that I share. And one of those is the Artist for Everyone practice that I have um, those videos on YouTube that you can join along. And, and I'm very specific about the intention of those. So that is one part of it. And these are also meant to give away, you know, these are also meant to give away. Brings us joy, then we can teach someone else how to do it, and we can send our work into the world. And then I also have my, my daily practice of learning to see, and this is really, really special to me. I'm just going to move this. Um, so I believe um, that anyone can draw. And I believe that drawing comes from seeing, from, from really seeing things as they really are. And so when I, when I do my seeing drawing practice, I tend to use a dip pen because it slows me down. And a dip pen is simply a metal nib that's inserted into something called a nib holder. And so you buy the nibs and the holder separately. And I use a nib called a G nib. Um, it says G on here. Many, many companies make them. They're easy to find online. I buy my through, mine through jet pens. So this is a G nib. And then I use um, ink that I can dip into. So this one here is platinum carbon ink. And I like this one because it's nice and black, okay? But it's also waterproof once it's dry. So if I make drawings, I might want to cover them in watercolor sometime, you know? So this way I can put paint on top of them and my drawing doesn't, doesn't dissolve when the water um, color hits it. So carbon ink is really wonderful and one bottle lasts a very long time. So these are my tools when I'm doing my seeing drawing. 
And um, I also have other inks, like this one is by Pilot Iro Shizuku. It's called Inaho. It's a beautiful kind of golden green, and sometimes I like to use this. It just depends, you know, on the day. So I have my ink and I have my pen and a piece of paper. And what I do is I draw things in nature. Sometimes I draw my cats. Um, I drew my husband last night when he was working at his desk. Um, I draw all different things. I'm not sure which one of these I drew here. But you can see <clears throat> that um, whatever is around me, you know, I just, I just take to it and draw it. And I take my time and I draw in silence and I really, really look at what I'm drawing. I will hold it in my hand and I just start to make marks. And the reason I like pen also is because I'm not tempted to erase it because really, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. So obviously, I mean, this looks, you know, that they have a similar look to them, right? I can, I, I've done this a long, I mean, I, over and over again for almost five years now. And so my eye and my hand have learned how to work together. So when I'm studying something, my hand has learned how to mark down what I see, what my eyes see. So when you first begin this, you, you may look at your drawing and say, well, that looks nothing like that. But you know what? That does not matter. In fact, very often I will draw, I'll, I'll hold this in my hand and I'll draw over here and I don't look at my drawing. Okay, so the result is not what matters, but over time, the results will be very honest. They're honest from the beginning. There's a lot of truth. Even if you think that your walnut doesn't look like the walnut that you tried to draw, there's a lot of truth in that drawing. And over time, it becomes even more true because over time, with practice, with doing this every day, we are learning how to see. I can promise you that. I've seen it many, many times, and I've seen it in myself. So this is another kind of dandelion lesson. And while I might not send these out in the world, this is nourishing me, okay? This is, this is filling my well, all right? And that's very important, too. And these are not meant to be sold or anything like that. They're just... They're just something to spend time in silence. It's almost like meditation and to, to learn how to see the world around us. It has a great effect on our spirits. So that is another form of dandelion lessons. And then I also have my morning meditation practice. And I don't know, let me see here. I just started a new book, but here's the one I just finished. And so these are little rice paper books, and every morning, I share them on Instagram, every morning I just let my paint, my paints, and my brush guide me on this beautiful paper. And every day is a surprise. I never know what's going to happen. And this is also a really beautiful um, part of dandelion lessons. So it's just pure color experience. I'm not drawing the world around me. I'm experiencing my tools. I'm experiencing the joy of color. Okay? So that's another form of dandelion lessons. And then the last one I want to talk about, I made a video about it um, called Edigami. And Edigami is a fairly specific art form. It's a Japanese art form, and you can watch that video to find out more. And I think it's a wonderful place to to begin. And I just sort of took it in my own direction, um, what felt right to me. And, and for me, etagami is typically drawing something from life, like an apple or, um, you know, a cat or, or something, and then putting down some words that may have nothing to do with, with the subject, but, the, but, but you're making this sort of clumsy, beautiful drawing from your heart and then putting some words on it and then sending it out in the mail to someone to bring them joy. And that is a wonderful thing, and I still do that. But my, my dandelion lessons are a little bit different. So I'm gonna turn the video off. I forgot to get a glass of water, and then I will be right back. Okay, so 
When I make the dandelion lesson postcards that I'll send out in the mail, I use um, I use these Edagami postcards sold by Jet Pens. Um, I also use Strathmore watercolor postcards. Um, you could even use index cards. I mean, what, you know, whatever you have is good. <laughs> whatever you have is enough. So I happen to have these, and I really love them, um, mostly because the paper sort of bleeds a little bit, and I find that beautiful and joyful to work on. And I have my wild thorn paints, and I never really have anything in my mind when I begin. I, I wet my brush, and I look at my paints, and I am drawn to a color, and that's where I begin. However, there have been times where I begin, and then something comes into my heart or in my mind, and I just continue with it. So that is fine too, but mostly I'm just thinking of color, and I keep looking at this wood violet, so I'm going to start there. And I just put my brush down and I let my brush dance on the paper. I don't mind if I get splotches or splashes of color. It, it's really... I have a hard time talking and doing this at the same time. So when I began those first marks of violet, I felt the flower, <laughs> so I just kind of continued with that a little bit. And something that I do um, almost always is I add a little bit of sparkle because I love it. <laughs> See how that green rushed into the bronze oh my goodness it's so beautiful anyway so that is that is my practice and sometimes it takes longer and sometimes it doesn't take as long it just really depends and I never know what's going to happen and I love that about it I absolutely love it so once I'm done with this I have a chop and I've also got a video about that this is my chop and this has my monogram on it and I also have a little stamp of a, a dandelion seed, which is very special to me. And I sign my dandelion lesson postcards with my chop and my dandelion seed. I just use a stamp pad. This one's a beautiful bronze color that I really love. And I look at my card and I say, where would I like to sign it? And I think I'm gonna sign it right here And it doesn't have to be perfect. It just happens the way it happens. And then I let my card dry. And while it's drying, I usually write down some thoughts in this little book I have and it's just I, I write little verses and it might have a lot to do with what I painted or nothing at all it really doesn't matter and so um, I have a few that I haven't used that yet so I will um, I'll put those I'll put one on it when it when it's dry but I just take a few moments to write some words down and that's a really important part of this to me the words and then 
still, while I'm waiting for it to dry, I create a wrapping paper um, to wrap the dandelion lesson in to send it out in the mail. And this is one I already created, and I use a crinkly paper called Tomoe River. Um, I buy it at Jet Pens. It comes in a pack of 100. It lasts a very long time. And I, I wet the paper with water, and then I, I drop in some ink in two different colors, and then maybe some gold paint, splash it on. And then I let that dry, and I might put a rubber stamp on it. This is a pussy willow that kind of got fuzzy, but it's still beautiful. <laughs> um, and then I let this dry. And then later in the day, I can finish the dandelion, um, the dandelion lesson and wrap it and put it in an envelope to mail out. Um, when I, 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 have an, I have a video on this that you can watch. It's called Handmade Wrapping Paper, and that shows this whole process from start to finish. So I recommend that if you're interested. But for now, um, and I also have a, a video on, on making a dandelion lesson postcard. I think it's called Edigami. And it, it's, it's basically the same process, but I just come from a little bit of a different perspective with it for myself um, because I really like the more just intuitive work of, of appreciating my, my paints and my brush and my paper. So um, I'm going to let this dry, and when it's dry, I will write some words on it so it's ready to send out. But that's really, that's really all I have for today. I just, I really wanted to express what Dandelion Lessons is. I know you've seen me um, hashtag it and, and you know, my videos um, are called Dandelion Lessons. And they really do encompass quite a bit of thing, d different practices, but they all have the same purpose. So I hope that you will try some of them and make them your own, and that I hope you will teach them to others and spread your joy far and wide. All right, that's all for today. I really appreciate you being here, and thank you so very much. Thank you. I had one final thought um, that I wanted to share. And when I was reading to you from this book, oh, there's my husband last night. <laughs> um, I was reading to you, and I read from this page, the meaning of life is to see. Being an artist does not mean coming, uh, covering clean pieces of paper. So this part, that I actually wrote down from this book. And this book is something I discovered a few weeks ago. Um, and it's by Frederick Frank, and I, I know I've talked about him in other videos and also on Instagram. And this book, I highly recommend any book by Frederick Frank if you want to develop um, learning how to see. And it's been very influential on me. Um, I, you can see it's well underlined <laughs> every page. So it's his thoughts about this practice and his practice and how he taught it. And, and it's just peppered all the way through with his beautiful, beautiful, beautiful drawings. So I just wanted to share that as well. This book, um, Meditation and Action, Zen Seeing, Zen Drawing by Frederick Frank. And if you find any of his other books, I highly recommend getting those too. I bought them all used um, over the past few weeks. I bought four of them used um, through Amazon. Uh, you can go to the used section through small booksellers that sell used books. And um, they're just wonderful. So that, that, that's my final thought that I wanted to leave you with. Take a look at his books. They're really wonderful. So thank you again. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Have a wonderful day.